Hey everyone, I'm Eric. This is my wife, Julie. We are The Blended Life. Hey you guys, today this one's all about the bio parents and why I think it's the hardest role in your blended family. We have tons of great stuff coming up. If you're a step parent, stay tuned because it's going to give you some compassion and grace and things to consider being in relationship with the bio parent in your home. Bio parents, you're going to feel heard and seen. This one's for you. Okay, where are we getting started on this one? Well, today is all about the bio parents. Woohoo! And I think it's a really, I hope that if you're a step parent, you're listening to this episode and. Because this ain't for you. <laughs> no, it is. Oh, it is. I think it's, it's more for step parents and for co parents than the actual bio parents. Because what I, my hope is out of this episode is that step parents have some compassion okay. and grace for their significant other. And that co-parents can also find some compassion and grace and encouragement um, for their co-parent. And so what I want to start off by asserting, because this is my opinion. Your professional, honest opinion. This is my opinion as a stepchild, a step-parent, a bio-parent, and a co-parent. This is my opinion. That bio-parents have the most difficult role in a blended family. Oh, yeah. That's my assertion. Well, I mean, every one, including the kids, have a troublesome role because this stuff isn't easy, and that's why we're all here. But, yeah, the, the, the bio parents get stuck between a rock and a hard place every time. Yeah, step, step if, parents. If, if everything's not flowing perfectly. Well, and nothing ever is flowing perfectly. <laughs> so, but I think for step parents, step parents always have an out. Not my kid, not my problem. Right. You know, and they don't feel for the children like a bio parent. So it's so different. Yeah. So I think it, it's it's step parents. It's all hard. You're right. And. But no, there's e- this, even but, the kids. But the bio parents right? is way more harder. The kids don't have to listen to the step parent because you ain't my parent. Um. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, yes, theoretically, but in a in a really well functioning family, the kids should listen to and respect everyone. Well, respect is a thing. No, but listen to also. I mean, if if you tell my son something, you know, with, with authority, authority, then he should have to listen to you if if we are a well functioning family. The good thing is if, most of us aren't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think step parents, you know, can listen to this podcast and have some compassion for their significant other because as hard as step parenting is, I want to say it's even harder being the bio parent. Hmm. And I think it's an impossible situation to be stuck between your spouse. Right. And your children. Yeah. And. Nice one. Acknowledge every, that. It totally is. Yes. And what? Tell no, it, it is. No, I mean, it's one of those places where a lot of times everyone wins, but you always lose. I was just having a, a breakthrough session today with a potential client. Um, and he said he just feels like he's. It doesn't matter what he chooses. He's always choosing between spouse and child. Yeah. And he's going to hurt someone. So he's in a position where he feels like no matter what, because those oh, two Oh, you mean are, not like physically, like he's going to hurt someone's feelings. Yes. Finish not, your sentence. Sorry, not physically. Well, I mean. <laughs> I'm like, wait. I wouldn't have finished. Yeah, man, he's really angry. <laughs> no. He's going to hurt someone's feelings. He's going to upset someone. Yeah, okay. You know, he's going to make one of the other feel like they're less than or that he's choosing one over the other. And that hurts. Yeah. And I get that as a child. I have a stepchild myself and or a bio. I'm a child always, I guess. But I think. (laughs) Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. I get that, though, where you feel like you're just disappointing someone always. That's a really 
hard place to live. I feel like I'm in that space quite often. I'm sure you maybe do too, but I feel like I'm very often in that place, like between like my son and you. Really? I, yeah. I, and that's interesting cause because I you, try really hard not to put you. I know. And that, but, yes. That. But that's, I think part of what does that is you try so hard not to put me in that position that I see like it matters enough to you that you're like, this matters enough to me that I'm not going to put him in that position that it actually like reinforces the position. Dear God. So I can't win. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All these roles are really, are really lose, jacked. Lose, lose. Yeah. Bunch yeah. of losers. We're going to rename this podcast a loser life. <laughs> so then when you feel like you're stuck between me and your son, uh -huh. what do you do with that? <laughs> not a damn thing. I go my own way. You and go your own yeah, way. Yeah, Stevie Nicks made me a song once, and I just went my own damn way. But what does that practically look like? Because I it think doesn't, men it, feel like this a it lot. It doesn't. Especially. Sometimes you have to choose. Sometimes you have to figure out what the situation is and go with it. The hard, the, so like, are you choosing the lesser of two evils? Yeah, usually. Are you sometimes, your values or yes, morals or what? It, all of it, yes. It just depends on what the situation is and what's going on. And sometimes I'm like, all right, this is what I know is the best decision and the right outcome. And yeah, he might be mad at me later, but I'm doing what I know is right. Or she might be mad at me later, but she's going to come around and understand what I'm doing is right. And sometimes you just have to do you. Well, Who? I think, no, I think you have to do what's right, and that's leadership. Yeah, but and that's, that's you. what I want to That should be you. That's one of those things you're like, I understand that this is the right decision. And, like, yeah, you or him. Someone might get their feelings hurt, or it might be something that's like, gosh, I'm going to get my feelings hurt, but this just works out best for the both of you. What I love about what you're saying is that you aren't, so the way you just shared about your decision-making process when you feel like you're in the middle between your wife and your son is that you don't really kowtow to either. You're not trying to people please or trying no. to choose. You're really just choosing what is in alignment with your morals and value system. And that's how you do life. You're not trying to make one of us happy. You're not trying to choose. No, one you over can't the other. because, because then you start doing, you know, even though <clears throat> biblically we're supposed to put our spouses before our children, a lot of times situations don't allow us to do that. Sometimes situations are are different. I think the biblical way of putting your spouse before your children is a much deeper meaning than um, these these situations, if you will. And if you will, I would like a, to open up possibility that you can put your children first sometimes and still do right by your spouse. That, yeah, of course, 100%. So they both and that's, and can that's, exist, right? You don't yes, have to and, choose one or the other. And you can live a you can live a um a Christian or biblical or godly life, whatever you choose to call it. You can live that kind of life and still put your child first sometimes. Um again, depending on the situation. It's just it's the overall, it's the way you live, it's the way you present, it's the way you structure, you know, just because you work in a work office where the CEO is the boss of everything doesn't mean that sometimes the manager doesn't make the shots or some or call the shots. And it doesn't mean that sometimes the the worker doesn't call the shots. Like sometimes it only needs to go so high up the pole, you know, until it all makes sense. So high up the pole and for the good of the whole. I don't know what you do. We're going to make shirts that say that. We're not making shirts. <laughs> you guys, we're like 12 years into this thing. and I keep talking I, about it. We I, never do it. I'm still wearing the same black shirt I got like eight years ago. You used to wear white shirts every podcast. Yeah, but and now you my, changed. my you went to the dark side. My heart has changed, and here we are. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's because I still have the same damn white shirts, and they're not so white anymore. They're like I'm light just, blue now. Yeah. <laughs> At least someone, they're not pink. Oh, I know. Like I don't know how they turned blue. I don't know. You we guys. had a, a we had a a load of laundry, and I don't wash anything different than I've ever washed it the past <laughs> forever. And we had a load of laundry where all the all the like whites came out blue, and I looked in everything, and I could not find what might be the causation of that. Know. It was wild. Anyway, yeah, sidetrack. I, I have baby blue shirts now. They're not even baby blue. They're like they're not. I don't even know what you call they're it. Like, they're they're feminine hint, blue shirts. They're a hint of blue. <laughs> yeah, a touch of blue. A touch of blue, Gosh. for you. All right. Black it is. So, 
also with with bio parents and this idea of being in the middle and I I love that you said you just choose what is in alignment with your core values and beliefs and what you feel is right that must feel good that you're not choosing sides and I think yeah but at the end of the day you still lose it doesn't matter so you might as well do what's right because no matter what someone's not going to be happy and you're still going to lose like that's the moral of the story and that's that's probably what your client's saying it doesn't matter how you choose it you can you can always choose the lesser of of two evils but you're still gonna lose well and if you feel like you're in the middle take yourself out of the middle or just take yourself out (laughs) of the middle but that's a choice right you are wherever you choose to be so if you are in the middle of something mm, then you don't have to be in the middle of it so true in this I don't agree with that statement. Oh, let me let. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Let's go back to I've I've shared this example a lot, and this aligns with with some of my clients and what they go through, right? So, bio parent is trying to micromanage connection between their spouse and child because right. there's no connection, or it's hard, it's it's broken connection, or whatever. Right? They don't right. like each other. They fight. Whatever. Right. And so this relationship between step-parent and step-child, bio-parent feels in the middle of because they both parties run to the bio-parent with tattletale, like they're tattletaling on each other. They're complaining about each other, you know, complaining about the other to the bio-parent. And the bio-parent becomes the trash can of bullshit of both people's dissatisfaction with one another. Are you following? Am I making sense? Uh, I mean, I'm going to need a diagram, but okay. So bio parent is the wasteland for all the shit that exists between stepchild and step parent. Why are you hitting your head on the mic? Because I'm okay. Keep going. Keep going. So my point is, is that a lot of energy and a lot of time and a lot of just emotion is wasted on trying to micromanage a relationship that has nothing to do with you. I mean, you are the reason for it, but you cannot, like bio parents can't be responsible for everyone's relationship in the home. And I feel like that is what's put on bio parents a lot. Like everyone expects bio parents to yeah, facilitate. It, everyone all that. expects everything from everyone. You know, there's so much expectation in blended families. And I think that's why I'm banging my head on the microphone. It's like all these hidden expectations and it's just unrealistic it really is i mean it really is like think of all these expectations of our co-parents of our exes of our spouses of our children of our stepchildren there's so many little hidden expectations that if all these little things went right our blended family would be perfect and the the fact of the matter is None of that ever goes right. I mean, it might at one time, but the other 10 things fall short. So our blended families aren't perfect. And here we are listening to a podcast, discussing on a podcast. And that's literally why. It's because this stuff never goes perfect. So all we can do is control the controllables. And what's the controllable in this situation? You. It's ourselves. Mm -hmm. And all we can do is control ourselves and control what is the best outcome for us? And a lot of times, like I just said, it's it's choosing between the lesser evils. And that goes for, again, like the whole laundry list that I just named off from, from co-parenting and step-parenting and yada, yada, yada. The only thing we can do is control ourselves and what works good in that situation. Now, if we all started taking control of ourselves and stopped waiting for everyone else, to change and make a change and the situation to change because other people need to change, well, then we'd all be fine. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought up change. God, any change. (laughs) One of my favorite episodes of South Park. You wouldn't know. I don't know. I always tell people that you're walking South Park. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little. Unless you're in business and then it just depends on who your client is. It's true. But um, I'm glad you talked about change, though, because this is another thing that comes up when when bio parents are struggling in their blended family is they feel the pressure of 
having to change their kid to appease their spouse. So they feel like I have to change my child for my spouse to be happy. And if I don't do that, I will be punished by my spouse and the marriage is going to fail or the marriage is going to be rocky or the marriage is going to suck. And which so is, yeah, which there's is, that part of it too. That's a really big struggle and I know for You and I have probably both felt like that, but never put that on one another. Like, I think you have felt like that about me and your children. And I have definitely felt like that about you and my children. And the, the downfall of that is neither of us have ever put that on one another. We put that on ourselves. So again, that's controlling the controllable. That's controlling ourselves and being like, my kid doesn't need to change to appease you or appease our family or appease our lifestyle. What we need to do is we need to change ourselves to control the situation better so our kids react or behave differently within our family. Yeah, it's a really important conversation to have before you get married about what do we value in our home as far as like respect or honor or, you know, just house rules. Like, well, where the hell were we before we got married? <laughs> in like La La Land? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure. Well, I don't think this is what gets told to me is that they feel bio parents often feel the pressure of changing their children. But back to your point about change, we can't change other people. So it's interesting because I don't think I mean, our children and, you know, all of our children, they are who they are. And you can nurture them and you can raise them up in the way that they should go and you can be the best role model and lead them and have boundaries and consequences. But at the end of the day, our children are going to become who they choose to become. Right. And so there's even this element that it's such an unreasonable and unrealistic expectation to put on a bio parent to change their child because even our children are not going to change unless they want to. This is a universal truth. Well, and a lot of times forcing change onto children and requiring to do them to do stuff when they are not happy to do it, a lot of times pushes them in the opposite direction. So keep that in mind too, you guys. I mean, if there's some things, you know, like don't ever drink, don't ever do drugs, like, all right, be a stickler on that type of stuff. But it's like, you know, telling your your 12 year old son like you can't have a mullet like you can never have a mullet like I'll I'll disown you if you have a mullet <laughs> then uh, or a bowl cut uh, which came up in our house uh, yeah the mushroom the the toadstool <laughs> um <laughs> let your kids figure out things now if it's not detrimental to them and I only use haircut because it's something that'll grow back and it's uh, whatever you know um but it's, it's about guiding our children and letting them make the best educated decisions. You know, so again, we have to be sticklers on some things, but we also have to remember our kids are their own people. So the best thing we can do for them is guide them. And I think that, you know, to go along with that, we can also expand our children's, like what our children know about life is nothing. No, what we know about life is nothing. So what we can do for our children, though, is they may not even realize that there are 10 different haircuts they could have or 100, right? They only right. know of one other haircut. Yeah, the or mushroom even, toadstool. But mohawk or mushroom toadstool. And you're like, let me open up <laughs> choice for you, right? There's so many other. Yeah. There's, um, a, there's a really cool hairstyle called a wolf cut. Mm. which Is that really cool or are you just calling it cool? I It's too cool for me. <laughs> most things are <laughs> but i that was a, a hairstyle that my that my daughter wanted a while like years ago and i was like what's a wolf cut like she opened up what did she end me. up with i don't even know what you call this she got a haircut about, yeah, I know. So that's, and about she wasn't my her, she wasn't my funny. example until we started talking about it. I think that's probably just in the back of my mind. But oh, I totally thought that's cute. why you were talking no, about no, it. Not at all. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, great. Like I'm doing it subliminally. I'm yeah. half asleep. I've been up since like the beginning of the day, and I went to bed at the beginning of the day, and I'm exhausted. You're doing great. I have a headache too. You're doing great. Luckily, we're not talking about mini wives because people really hate it. They think I. They like, you got love a, you this got a episode. mini wife at home. I'm like, 
People have asked me, people uh. literally have asked me to send them that episode because they can't access it it's anymore. It's so ridiculous. It's so dumb. Uh. Like the whole thing. And it had nothing to do with me. That's the best part. But everyone's so triggered by me in that episode. So if you guys haven't listened to that and want to hear like my grouchy side of like, Julie and I tried starting over like 10 times and she kept <laughs> screwing it up and I didn't feel good. And I had oh, 10,000 things. You, you want to go back to our retakes? No. I had to keep starting it over and over and over. And I'm finally like, we're just doing this. But anyways, people think I have like a total trigger with that. And I'm like, dude, that's like the least, I, the the topic I care the least about. Cause I don't mm. have anything. It, it doesn't mm. affect me whatsoever. So mm. it's kind of fun. Oh, Gosh, yes, let's promote that. We have to are we re are we re recording that episode? I don't think we need to. I don't have anything positive to say about it. I'm like, I don't Did know. Did you take it down or is it still up? I don't know. Um no, I believe it's still up. But at the end of the day, oh. it's like, um, I probably wasn't the best one to talk to it because I, I had a lot of like figuring out to do. I get it, but the topic's so much deeper than the topic's so much deeper than what we could have dove into in an hour. There's like, there's like some serious psychological stuff there, and I'm just, I'm not the pro for that because it does, it literally affects me in zero way, shape, or form. So I'm, I'm like trying to take things in and figure it out as we go, and I'm like also angry and just had a day, and it was the perfect storm. It was the perfect storm, but everyone thinks it's go me. listen to Mini Wife Syndrome. <laughs> no, it's our no. most popular episode. You just so, promoted it's it now. The stupidest anyway. thing ever. Um. The other thing about bio parents I find interesting in my clients is that um, bio parents struggle a lot when they are married to somebody who does not have children of their own. Well, yeah, but again, that's a situation where it's like, kind of should have thought about this first, and you're going to need a lot more than an hour to tackle these deep rooted feelings. And I was going to, yeah, agreed. And then I was also talking with somebody that they're, they're the bio the bio person I was talking to, the bio parent I was talking to, had kids older okay. than their spouse's children. And uh. so even that gap, like what, like, so for instance, um, let's say, you know, my son just turned 18. And let's say you had two kids who were six and four years old. Yeah. That's so really what I'm dealing with with my child at 18, step parent has all kinds of like, um, judgment and criticism and because they've already dealt with all that no no bio parent has young diagrams of this is so much this is so much so bio parent or so step parent has little kids okay bio parent has an 18 year old okay so we know what kids go through 18 it's a weird space of like not an adult want to be an adult yeah in charge of their medical care but still live at home you so that's yeah so that's a hard space to be in as a bio parent. And to navigate that, if you've never done it before, is new. And then you have step parent who has younger children who can't possibly relate or understand what the other one's going through right now because their their children are younger. They yeah. haven't been there yet. No, yeah. But we're judging they're judging the other person and oh, they're giving okay. criticism and feedback and getting mad that bio parent of the 18 year old isn't handling that the way they would when they haven't been through it. And so I guess I'm just saying is like the lack of understanding that bio parents face either from a significant other who has no children and can't possibly relate or understand because they, they don't, they just not a, it's just a fact. They're not right. They're not wrong. They're not bad. It's just these people can't understand parentless, parentless people can't understand what parents go through. Same also with bio parents who are married to people with kids different ages. They might be walking through things at different times. And that's also really hard because there's a lack of understanding and empathy and compassion of what's going on. There's a lot of criticism and judgment over something they not haven't walked through yet. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. So that's really, really, really a tough place to be in. Yeah. Do you ever feel that way? I mean, I guess no, our kids are all in the brand same. New kids. Or, or younger but kids. But our kids are all kind of in the same age bracket-ish. Yeah, they all fall in like a category. They're all in the same generation. <laughs> what Those is our kids' generations? I don't even I don't know. know. I don't pay attention to that stuff. Gen dumb. <laughs> I mean, I don't think our kids fall in that, but there, I know a lot of kids in this generation where I'm like... Is the millennial thing over? I don't know. 
Yeah. I don't know. I don't pay attention Aren't to we? generation. Wait, see, yeah, no, it's stupid. Know. It's like tarot cards. Like, what sign are you? I'm like, uh, I'll show you a misdemeanor sign on my middle finger. Okay. That's how I feel today. Did I tell you guys I woke up early and I have a terrible headache and. But you're doing are. great, love. No, I'm. I had. You have had to explain things to me like eight times right now, and I'm like, I really need a diagram. I have no idea what we're talking about. Oh, uh, okay. So let's talk about bio parents and their kids and showing up for their kids. Okay. This will be something that you're really good at. <laughs> you show up for your kid and everything. I try to. Every you're amazing. I try to. You're the best bio dad ever. So I think a lot of bio parents, when they're co-parenting, right, and it's a difficult co-parenting situation where there might be lied about or gossiped about or, you know, um, poisoning the waters with the children and parent alienations happening and all that stuff, the temptation can be for bio parent to tap out. Like this is too hard. I am, it's too painful, you know, to deal with, with parent alienation and to deal with um, all the lies and, and whatever. Like a lot of times bio parents. Yeah, but how do you tap out? Like, how do you give up on that? Like how, how, like what's that even look like? Well, it, it might look like, well, you can just go live with your other bio parent full time. Oh, you mean just like giving up on the kid? I yeah. Mean like tap it, um, oh. You know, and I think that's a struggle bio parents face a lot when there's a tough co-parenting situation and they don't feel like there are other co-parents in their corner. And what if you want to tap out, but the other parent won't let them come there full time? So now you're stuck between your kid and a hard place and like you, you want to give up on your kid, but you're other parent wants to give up Isn't on the that kid boarding school or like <laughs> grizzly academy or <laughs> something like know. that i hopefully none of you have that but i'm like there's so many scenarios this is, again this is like the mini wife thing there's a lot of scenarios here that could play into this that i'm like i don't know i just want to honor bio parents struggles so they feel heard and seen and understood and that step parents and other people listening to this if you're in relationship with a bio parent and it's a blended family or divorce situation to have some compassion and grace because there it is multifaceted and there are so many struggles that bio parents shoulder that aren't talked about because they're not the step parent. Because I think a lot of the blended family focus is always on the step family portion of it, right? The step parent, the step child, all the issues with step parent and the step parent having all these feelings and the step children being, you know, and it's like the bio parents just trying to fucking tread water. Wow. Why? And survive. And I just wanted to give an episode to that so that the bio parents could feel heard and seen because this is really hard stuff. You know, it is it's something that's not talked about. It's very difficult and painful to be in relationship with your children when you're when your children are being turned against you and that's out of your control because there's custody and they have to go to the other home or whatever. Like that is a str- an unseen struggle that doesn't get talked about very much. It's hard to keep wanting to be in relationship with people when you feel like you're unseen and unheard and disrespected and dismissed. Because everyone else's happiness trumps yours. And I think bio parents shoulder a lot of that because they are responsible for the kids and the step parent isn't. They are responsible to co parent with the ex and the step parent doesn't have to co parent with the ex. They are morally obligated to be in relationship and, and raise these children up. And I guess a step parent is if they commit to a family on some level, but it looks different. And so. What I want to say to the bio parents out there, if you're feeling like this is all a little painful, is to never give up your seat at the parenting table. Never allow anyone to rob you of your seat at the parenting table, right? Not your spouse, not your ex, not your kid's step parent. You know, you have, you were gifted these kids or this child, and that's not a mistake. You are not a mistake being paired up with this child or these children. It is, you are the best person for them. If you are safe person, then this is not a mistake. So I would always encourage bio parents to please, and it matters. You know, I remember I actually, I mean, I don't talk to my dad anymore, but back when I was, when I had a relationship with my dad, my dad fought 
uh, my biological father fought for me in court my whole life. Um, and I don't, I don't pretend to know the ins and outs of my parents' custody schedule. That sucks too because that gets exhausting. That gets expensive. That breaks down a parent. That breaks down a bio parent. You know, they want to give up. They want to give up, and yeah, that just becomes a a losing battle. But children are smart, and they see their parents fighting for them. They see their parents showing up for them regardless of what's being said about them. They see their parents providing for them and encouraging them and loving them, even when they're little jerks, right? Kids are aware enough to take in what's going on. And so I remember, though, I told my bio dad, like, thank you for fighting for me. Otherwise, I may have not had a relationship with him at all. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I mean, it ended that way, but Do you th- I mean, I'm glad I got to know a smidge of who my dad was. And I felt very glad that he at least fought for me on some level. Like as a kid, that made me feel good. Do you think at a point though, he could have just been so overdoing this for so long that it took so much of the feel away that all of a sudden it's like, you have now become your mom's child and he has no say and no no in with your true upbringing that it just created such a disconnect and such a a gap that eventually you know years later yeah you're an adult now but there's been such a disconnect for so long and so much a beat down and so much court and pulling away and just negativity that finally he's just like, I don't know how to have a relationship with this person anymore. Yeah. That's a, that's very, very insightful. Yeah, absolutely. That's probably right. Pretty close to what happened on his end. That sounds yeah, very and that's such a, like that's logical. a bummer to me because I know the relationship that him and say your half brother have, and it's really close and it's very kind and it's not, a bunch of ups and downs it just flows and everything i mean everyone's got their weird things and their 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 things you know we all have our things but everything i know about them minus their things is they're pretty normal standard just nice people right who are we talking about bio dad yeah he's not a mean guy how many times have you met him twice twice three times three times um mm-hmm. And at the beginning of our relationship and Mm. I have, I don't have a single bad thing to say. The only thing I know about him that is anything negative is his things. That is just hearsay. At any time I met him out of the multiple times, multiple three times. um, And it was for a little while at a time, just nice, pleasant people. Not, you know, yeah. Like, well, it was just, it's interesting anyways. because the irony, the irony in all that is when I was growing up and I don't pretend to know people's, um, like reasoning. I mean, he probably had his, his reasoning for why he fought for me, whether it was child support or whatever, yeah. or maybe a relationship, you know, I, I'm not trying to. Well, and also, I mean, not, but not, I love, I love your mom dearly, but I sure as shit don't want to fight with your mom in court all the time for anything. No, my mom's a shark. No, I just, yeah. And I, I mean, I just. And to have my stepdad on your team. Yeah. yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just, you don't, yeah. It's, it's just, not fun. and it's icky. It's not court. If you guys have been to court for anything family law related, it's not a good time. It doesn't matter if you're quote unquote winning or if you're losing. Nothing about it is good. You don't ever leave the courthouse and go, yes. So I had glad the I best spent- day of my life. <laughs> it's not it's no. not rewarding i mean yeah you have your highs and your lows but it's not something people are like i cannot wait to go to court again i had so much fun yeah it's yeah. just not it and then if you're doing this between you know trying to fight for custody which i i don't know if i knew that he fought so long and, and so much for you for custody that changes a few things in my mind mm-hmm. about the way things play out very very quickly um but you do that long enough. And and let me tell you, I, I dealt with court for not even that long, maybe two years and, and a handful of times. 
and I'm exhausted from it. I'm like, I never ever want You're to go still to court recovering. Again. It's yeah. You're still paying for it, yeah. recovering for it. And I can't I can't imagine fighting for years and years yeah. and the amount of money and legal fees and everything that adds up, the travel that's involved with that, mm-hmm. you know, the rearranging of your work schedule and your life. Exhausting. I remember going to my dad's house and um in the guest room well it was my brother's room when he was there, slash guest room. Um the, he had a filing cabinet just full of all the legal documents. I mean, it was like four hot, you know, like the tall filing cabinets. Yeah, the tall. And it was just full of all court crap. And so I don't, I, I totally, I can, I, I mean, I, I understand that wasn't fun. The irony, though, is he fought so hard for me when I was a kid. And then when I became an adult and I was like, Dad, this is what, I need from you. I want from you. This is the relationship I I want. He didn't. F- he was just bye. No, and I think the re- he didn't fight I, yeah. anymore. It's no. just ironic, though, right? Like you no, fought so I hard, think, and then yeah. it was like peace out. But the, the, I mean, this is in the last thirty five minutes. My brain has shifted to like, oh, he was probably so beat down and so stripped of this mm-hmm. that he doesn't know how to anymore. You're in in his eyes or his, and he might not frame it like this. But long story short, and like as black and white as I can get it, your mom won the custody agreements. You became your mom's child. You lived full-time with your mom and your stepdad. You are now a part of that. Like, looking at it, like, your mom got the got the trophy in, in this court battle. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And your dad probably, again, probably doesn't frame it that way, but if you break it down to the most easygoing black and white way, that's what it plays out to like your Mm. mom won that and he got so beat down and so stripped that when it came to your adulthood he's like i don't know how to have a relationship with you anymore that was clear he did not know how to have a relationship with me and seemed very uninterested quite frankly it's sad like now i'm like it it bums me out like thinking about this right now bums me out well i'm whatever i've accepted it i have peace around it it is what it is but i just and so Growing up, having that dynamic as of my life, you know, as a, as a child of divorce and having bio parents who were in court a lot and didn't like each other and, you know, hated each other for so all the years of their of my life. What I will say now as a bio parent myself is, you know, it matters that you don't give up. It matters to your children that you don't give up. They're watching, even if it's exhausting and even if it's a lose-lose situation, you know, um, your kids will never lose if they know you care and that you're in their corner and you love them and you are not giving up on them. So, you you know, when you make it not about not giving up on your children, then everyone wins. You know, I think that's, that is what I want to say to bio parents who are struggling, you know, with, with hard relationships with their kids or court or whatever, you know, it matters to the kids that you fight for them. And they may not see it until they're really old um, or their parents or they've gone through some, have some life experience under their belt, but it matters that you don't give up well, on your kids. And also remember that all this affects your kids. Like we are, I mean, we're years and years and years later and look at how this has affected you. I mean, we're talking about stuff like future wise, but look at how playing this all in reverse your parents hating each other, your parents going through court, your parents fighting over you. Look at what this has done to affect you and in good, bad or indifferent, however you want to say it, it has affected you and it's affected your relationship with your mom. It's affected your relationship with your dad. And the common denominator is that this has affected you. It's affected my relationship with marriage. It's affected my relationship with my children you know, it's affected relationships across the board, and I could, I, I don't necessarily want to be that vulnerable right now, but I'm, I'm understanding as the older I get, just I can pinpoint like how. Yeah. And so it's if interesting. you guys, if you're listening to this and you hate your co-parent and you, you hate your, your step co-parent, like start thinking about that a little bit. Why do I hate this person? Why does this hate live in my heart? Why does this hate about, matter? That's it because. Why do these people matter so much that I hate them so much and I want to beat them down so much? Do I want to win my kid that badly? Because me winning right now might not be my kid winning later in life. No, you winning your kid, your kid loses their other parent. That's it. 
that's a loss for the kid. Well, it's a loss. Uh, it's a loss for the entire lifetime because it just. And it's a loss for you because I think about what my mom had to deal with as far as me. Because I had daddy issues for sure growing up my whole life. And the ways I acted out weren't like my friends who partied and drank and all. I acted out in my own special ways. But, the, you know, I wonder often if I didn't have daddy issues, I probably wouldn't have. Like my my mom, even though she won me, she had to deal sure. with my loss of, of having my dad in my life every day. You know, she had to deal so it's like it was a lose-lose for her, too, because she had to deal with issues that wouldn't necessarily have been there. Maybe there have been different issues, but there's consequences, and there's there's a lot of loss, you know, all the way around when a, when a child loses a parent, whether it's parent alienation, whether it's custody, um, whatever that looks like. I mean, I don't know of anyone who truly wins. Yeah. Even the bio parent who gets custody or whatever, you That's know. That's what I mean. Yeah, but the, com- but the common denominator is always that kid. Yep, or, or the, the children. Yep, for sure. Um, you know, kids will never be upset that you're present. I wrote that down because, again, I think a lot of <laughs> bio parents. Did I say it? Peasant? No, did I say no, present? No, I'm just like tell your son that. <laughs> I know. I know. Later in life, <laughs> later he will life, look back, yes. and he'll be like, "My mom was there every time." Yeah. So a lot of which is why um, I continue to show up. I'm like he would be happier if I wasn't there, but I know one day it'll matter. It matters. I don't, I don't think he's allowed to let it matter right now, but I know it matters deep down inside and I can speak from experience. It matters. So, um, man, I think a lot of bio parents feel guilted or shamed about like showing up. I've heard this a lot where bio parents feel like um, they shouldn't show up, or if they show up, it's bad. You know, this isn't from the kids no, necessarily, uh, yeah. but this is so they no, don't show gu- up. No, that's garbage. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't show up or don't show up. I've been accused of this, like, oh, you wouldn't let me show up. <laughs> like, bull. We're in a public place. You show up whenever, wherever you want. If if our kids doing something, we've so been accused of this, and it's yeah. ridiculous. I'm I like, when never, have I, I think never. I said that too? I'm like, when have we ever prevented you no, from coming no. every? No. So if you guys are listening and <laughs> you feel like you're being you're being held back from showing up for your kid, like you show up again, again, control the controllables. If you can show up, you show up. That's right. You you continue to fight. You you own your seat at the parenting table. You don't let anyone take it from you. It matters to the kids. Um, and you'll never regret showing up. It's kind of like working out like I've never regretted actually working out like, man, I really wish I hadn't have done that. I always feel super proud of myself. I feel energized. I feel happy. I feel like you ever throw oh, good up job. when you're done. You're I've thrown up in a workout. Yes. But then that was like grit. Like I yeah, was do you like you regret that? No. Oh. Have you thrown up in a workout and regretted it? <laughs> Not a workout, but uh, hockey. Oh. Have you thrown up during hockey? Yeah, I've thrown up like pizza and <laughs> like all kinds of fun things. So I think it's there's no regrets, you know. No I mean regrets. And I think it's so an added bonus is it really pisses people off who don't like you when you show up, which for me, I like that. Like, let my yeah, presence make I don't you uncomfortable. Care enough if oh. like my you don't deal with that though. I don't think I you're, care so much. I'm like, that, I don't care. You oh. show up to anything. I don't feel like your ex has ever cared if you showed up or not. Like, no, I, no, 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 not about me showing up. Oh, it's I like, feel like oh, you kept me from showing up. Oh, you know, I'm like, I don't care if you show up. You. Show up. I don't know if you're listening to me. I know you are. Show up. I don't care. Yeah. And Either. The, and the other thing is bio parents, if you're allowing other people to control you and how you parent, whether it is your spouse or an ex or whoever, you're teaching your children to be con- like, that's how you do life is being controlled by others. Right. If you or cowarding a- away because, oh, they don't want me there. Right. They're, they said I can't. That's go. Being con- yeah. I didn't get invited. Like what? Take control of your damn life already. Correct. And so how you deal, bio parents, listen, how you deal with your ex and people who do not like you or do not want you around or whatever, how you deal with those people, your children are absorbing that and that it will be their frame of reference for how they deal with people who don't like them. Let's just simplify that. How you do anything in life. Is how you do everything in life. It's how you do everything Was that correct? Life. That's it. Yeah. But think about that. 
you do anything in life is how you do everything in life. Yeah. Um, I, I love, uh, so if you're a bio parent and you have a, this is more for like elementary school bio parents. So, um, it's no, no shock that my ex and I, you know, co-parenting isn't really a thing. And, um, and so they're in elementary school, especially when information had to get passed back and forth in elementary school, there's so much information, there's a, there, it's different than any other. I feel like there's more in high school, but it just doesn't get passed. Back high school, they just leave it to the kids. Yeah. You get to know nothing yeah, in high school. Yeah, it just gets not passed. It's very weird. But in elementary school where things do like assignments and, um, you know, whatever. I remember I, uh, communication wasn't great. So things would happen on my, uh, on not my days and I wouldn't find out about it. And so I, I figured out the best way to know what was going on with my child if if my co-parent wasn't going to tell me was I was going to volunteer in the classroom. Yeah, and you were there every week. I volunteered in the classroom every week. And then I just knew what was going on because I was there. And I didn't rely on my co-parent any longer because that was never going to happen to share information or keep me in the loop or whatever because that wasn't something that they wanted to do with me. So take control people. Take that's control right. of your so situation. You, and I remember like I loved our last episode so much because you were giving ideas on how to be crafty about like I think it was cleaning up adult children cleaning up after themselves. <laughs> like the dumpster. Listen to our last episode 155 if you need a laugh and crafty in a lesson in craftiness. It was my favorite episode maybe. So um but I think bio parents, if you have a tough co-parenting relationship and you feel like you're not in the loop, you need to think outside the box and get crafty of how are you going to um, get information and be involved without being dependent on your co-parent to relay stuff back and forth if that's not something that's going to happen. I think bio parents, um, we need to depend less on our co-parent than maybe we I try think to. we need to depend not at all on our co-parent, you know, our co-parent, like we, we do the best with them and don't completely write them off, but don't depend on them. Otherwise that is giving them responsibility and it's giving them a relationship. So if you're depending on them to communicate everything to you and you're depending on them to do the right thing by you, the good chances are you're going to be let down because you no longer have that intimate relationship with them that you once had. Mm -hmm. So true. So good. I have one more thing before we wrap up. I want to call out hypocrisy with bio parents in the same home. So <laughs> meaning this, like you and do I, it. not for not you and I, but I'm saying like when you are in a blended family and you both are bio parents and step parents in the home, does that make sense? Yeah. You're both having the same things happen. You're both causing problems and having problems caused. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to bring this up for consideration for us all that sometimes we don't extend the same understanding of the bond and love we feel for our own kids to our spouse with theirs because that's our stepchildren. So we really prioritize and honor and, and, you know, nurture the love and bond we have with our, our own children. And we demand that that be respected. We demand that that be recognized and we have strict boundaries in place for ourselves and our bio children until it comes to our spouse and their bio children then all of that goes out the window. And I see a lot with my, with my couples clients and, and with um, just client, my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients that there's this underlying hypocrisy between the bio parents and the home of like, it's okay for me and my children, but it's not okay for you and your children because that's the stepchildren. Do you know what I'm trying yeah, to say? And that's, yeah, and then the tables turn and it's like, it's no different. So just something to consider because if you can curb the hypocrisy there, I think marriages get better and blended families feel more united. Um, and I think you'll feel better in your blended family too. So that's all I have to say today about the bio parenting role in a blended family, you guys. It's no joke. Um, if you're doing it, keep up the good work. It is work and it is good work. That's it. Thanks for being here, you guys. Hit us up on all the socials. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and 
tune in next week. Yes. And if you would like more information on life coaching with me for blended families, go look at my website at becomingherd.com or you can always reach out to me via email at becomingherdnow at gmail.com. Um, I would love, love, love to chat with you to see if I could be of service to you and your blended family. Bye, you guys. Bye.